Hey, it's Brendan here from WP Speed Fix. In this video, we're going to talk about speeding up the WooCommerce backend or admin panel, something we get asked about a lot. And it's an important one because when you're working with WooCommerce all the time, managing orders, managing products, when the backend is slow and there's five to 10, 20 second delay loading the pages, it can be really frustrating. And it just makes simple things take a lot of time. So let's talk through some points here. These are kind of the big win or big hit items that will really move the needle and they usually well, usually when we see customers come to us come to us with this problem it's usually one of these key one of these things is the key issue or the root cause of the problem and then the others are kind of an optimization on top of that there's lots of other small things you can do as well but these are the ones that usually move the needle so let's get into it goes without saying the first one use good hosting um, the host we recommend is Cloudways. If you go to cways.net, you will see their website. Um, on our site, we have this post here, fastest WooCommerce hosting under our, I think it's under our DIY guides here, fastest WooCommerce hosting. These are generally the three hosts we recommend as a starting point. If you have a WooCommerce site and you want to kind of look at a better host, Cloudways is probably the fastest out of these, but it's a bit more technical, but you generally get the best bang for buck out of Cloudways. So that's who we recommend kind of for most sites. Um, the other two, Kinsta and SiteGround, um, they're a little less technical, but in terms of value, like raw dollars for performance, Cloudways is the best. So go to cways.net and check that out. Um, I won't go into that too much. It kind of goes without saying, but we still do see clients on GoDaddy and Bluehost and HostGator and some of these cheap hosts, and that's just not going to cut it. They're slow. There's a reason why the cheap hosts are $5 a month and not $50 a month. It's, you know, you get what you pay for. The, the cost of good hosting versus cheap hosting is, isn't much. There isn't much difference. It's kind of the cost of a cup of coffee versus the cost of a nice lunch. So when you take productivity into account, if you're sitting there for hours looking at you know each month waiting for pages to load, the cost of labor really adds up there. So you know, we're going with really cheap hosting. It's kind of false economy. You're losing money elsewhere. So it's, it's worth getting good hosting. So go to Seaways done it. Check it out. Um, they've got lots of different locations, lots of different options there, and a ton of features that will speed up WooCommerce in general. They also have, if you read that post there, you'll see on WooCommerce hosting, you'll see it talks about object caching. So object caching is a type of database caching, and that will also help speed up WooCommerce stuff in the back end cart checkout anything to do with products and orders object caching does a lot particularly if you have a busy site or if you have multiple checkouts happening at the same time that will make a big difference to performance so that's hosting pretty straightforward let's get to the next one this is a really big one particularly if you have an older woocommerce site that's been around for a while so if you have got a site that's five or ten years old you might have this issue where you're using an older version of the storage engine that the database runs on. So basically the database tables can run on two different formats. The faster one, the better one is InnoDB. The older one is MyISAM. And I'll link you to this in the um, description below. This post on our website, speeding up WooCommerce, speeding up WordPress database queries. Here's the post here. If you go down to point six, it kind of explains how to fix this. So with the older table, the MyISAM table, when something is writing to that database table, if you think about the database table as a spreadsheet, so it's like uh, an Excel spreadsheet. So some, when something is writing to that spreadsheet, nothing else can write to it. It's locked. So only one write can happen at a time. With this newer format, multiple write can happen to a t at a time. So the whole table is not locked. Just the row on the table being written to is locked. So that makes a huge difference for performance. It's kind of akin to where you would email around a, an Excel document and one person could work it on at a time versus using something like Google Sheets where multiple people can work it on at a time. So when you have a busy site with lots of add to cart, checkout, things happening like that, the database writes start to queue with the older database format. Um, with the newer database format, you don't really get that. So the database just goes much faster. On that post, it just talks about a simple way to convert the database tables. Make sure you do a backup first, but if you use this plugin here, Serve Vault Optimizer, um, that's an easy way to do it. If you've got a small database, it's basically one click and 30 seconds and you're done. And it will make a huge difference. You can cut the page load time from five to 10 seconds down to one second in the back end. So that's worth doing. It also can add indexes to the database table. So that also helps. So even if you don't have an issue or you're not using these older, this older storage engine or storage format, essentially, um, the indexes on the tables will help things as well. So that's pretty straightforward and you link up there and it has those instructions. So that's point six on that post. 
There's a bunch of other stuff about the database here, but um, yeah, 0.6 is the one you want. So that's database tables. Okay, this is a big one, high performance auto storage. So this is kind of similar, another database one. This is a new feature. So this is on the WooCommerce site. So high performance auto storage is basically in, I think WooCommerce 8.2, a new version of the database was introduced. So when WooCommerce was first added to WordPress, it was kind of just hacked in there and everything to do with products and orders and customers just use the existing database. And that was fine if you had a handful of products and a handful of orders, but if you have a busy site with thousands of products, thousands of orders, thousands of customers, that doesn't work. It's very slow. Those database tables were never designed for that. So high performance auto storage fixes that. So basically it changes the database. So there's a new set of database tables for products, for customers, for orders, and it speeds things up substantially. There you go. So from WooCommerce 8.2 released in October, 2023. So there's a long blog post there, but it's pretty easy to set this up. So basically there's three steps. So if you go, I'll scroll down here so you can see. So under, the WooCommerce settings and you go to advanced and then features, you'll see there's these settings here for setting it up. Oh, here we go. Um, so it's under the advanced tab, then features. So this is where you change this setting. So basically you need to have all plugins compatible with this um, new feature. And it will show here, if you have plugins that aren't compatible, it'll show you the list of plugins that need to be updated. And often those are paid plugins that you just need to go and find the update or pay their subscription to renew the license or whatever and get the latest version. So making sure all the plugins are compatible and there's nothing showing there that's an issue and then just basically turn it on. So it'll take some time. The database needs to synchronize the orders and customers and everything else you have to the new database format. And then once you're done, you can switch over. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here about it and how it works and you know what to do. There's, there's the stuff about incompatible plugins. Um, but basically that'll dramatically speed up everything as well. So it won't just speed up the back end, it'll speed up the add to cart, it'll speed up the checkout, anything the customer's doing as well. So that's an important one. It's pretty simple. Before you go messing around with this stuff, make sure you take a backup. So that's high performance auto storage. That's an easy one. These three alone, getting a good hosting, fixing up the database storage format and high performance auto storage. Those three are usually what the issue is. So if you, or the fix. So if you get those three nailed, then you should see a big difference in that kind of database, uh, sorry, that backend speed. Um, let's talk about these. These are more kind of niche ones and a bit more difficult and they're probably not gonna be the root cause of the issues here. But the next one, fixing PHP errors or just errors with your WordPress configuration that is happening, that are happening under the bonnet. So we use this plugin called Query Monitor to do it. So you'll see here, if you just search for Query Monitor, that's the plugin there. It's a free plugin. Once you install it, it adds this thing to the toolbar in the WordPress backend. It also shows in the front end if you're logged in. Um, and it just shows any errors or warnings that are happening on that page load. So I actually have a customer site I was speaking to this morning. I'll just turn it on here and you can see here it's got 20 PHP errors on this page. So each one of those errors, anytime that the hosting has to deal with an error like that, it's going to slow things down. And in some cases, it can slow things down substantially. We're talking about 10, 20, 30 seconds if they're serious errors. So basically, it gives you the information here. You can see here that basically what's happening in this case, these two plugins are not compatible with the version of PHP that the site is running. The version of PHP is too high, so these old plugins, um, or these plugins need to be updated to support version 8.3 of PHP in this case. So in your case, there might be other errors that might say that there's something wrong with WP config. There might be something else showing there, but basically this kind of indicates if there's, this one here is warning, so the warnings are in brown. Um, but if there's errors, they'll be in red like that. Errors are usually really bad. Warnings are not so bad or notices. Um, but anything in there really needs to be fixed. To get the maximum performance out of the site, that needs to be fixed. Once you finish with Query Monitor, make sure you disable it. It's just a normal plugin, so you just go in, Query Monitor, disable like that. It does have some resource overhead, so you don't want to run it all the time if you don't need it. So that's that. Quite often we find configuration errors because sites have been moved from different hosts and they have code from an old host, for example. That could be the issue as well and it might just be a case of that code needs to be removed or you know it's duplicating code somewhere in the configuration files or something like that but that is basically what we use to troubleshoot those errors happening under the bonnet very straightforward this one here usually not the root cause of most issues but every so wordpress runs on php that's the programming language it uses and every version of php is faster than the last one so you want to use the highest version of php your site supports 
each the current version right now is 8.3 so we're kind of towards the end of 2024 each version is depending what you're doing can be 10 to 50 percent faster than the previous version it depends on what functions being performed so 8.3 would be a bit faster than 8.2 and that's faster than 8.1 and 8.0 so the point is you want to use the highest version your site supports so um, you don't want to just go change this because it's going to break things. There are plugins and many hosts have ways to test PHP compatibility. So look that up for your own host and then look at switching that one. That is a kind of a developer level change. And you probably want to use these two in, in conjunction with, with each other. So if you change the PHP version, you probably want to install Query Monitor and make sure that you know there's no issues or errors happening under the bonnet. So I think that all makes sense anyway. But that one's probably for a developer, not a DIYer. All right, so the next one, use a content delivery network. And we recommend using Cloudflare with their APO service. This is what it is here, um, automatic platform optimization for WordPress. Sounds like a dorky name, but it's a really good service. It's only five bucks a month. So if you're not familiar, a content delivery network is a network of servers that basically take up some of the workload from the hosting. So what we're doing with the CDN in this case, or for our our problem here or the problem we're trying to solve here is we're trying to move the workload off the hosting somewhere else. So what we're doing is moving some of the work from the web hosting onto Cloudflare. And there's a free version of Cloudflare. So even if you use the free version of Cloudflare, it will help substantially, but APO will help even more. So basically the difference between the free version and the APO service is that with the APO service, the entire page for well, the, all the pages for the website are cached on Cloudflare's network. So basically when a user comes to the site, Cloudflare is basically serving up the page. As soon as the user starts doing things like logging in, adding to the cart, anything to do with the checkout products or orders, then that APO service essentially turns itself off and that traffic mainly goes back to the website. But the point here is with a content delivery network, we offload the workload or moving workload off the hosting. So the hosting is free to do more of what it only it can do so that's processing your stuff in the back end now there's some other bits and pieces here that we have on top of that that will help even further and this is again it's about moving workload or reducing workload so there's this blog post on our website we have some cloudflare rules that we can set up um, th three cloudflare rules to improve wordpress site speed and security the best one here or the most important one here i'll scroll down is this one uh, where is it blocking okay so this is the one we want, rule three. So what we can do with Cloudflare is block brute force attacks. So the typical WordPress or WooCommerce site is getting a 1,000 to 10,000 brute force attacks a day. So that's a lot. And usually they happen in a very tight period of time. So there'll be multiple times per second, which choose a ton of server resources. So with Cloudflare, we can add rules in to filter that traffic. So it runs them through a capture page or some sort of security message. And you would have seen this before. You go to a website and it's saying checking your security, that's Cloudflare or something similar to that. So basically what we're doing before they they hit the WordPress backend login or the My Account login in WooCommerce, we're running them through that filter. And if it's an automated brute force attack, then it will filter 99.9% .9 of that stuff. And it does it at the Cloudflare layer. So that workload is handled by Cloudflare and it never gets to the website. So that's a really simple one there. There is another one here to block SEO bots and crawlers. Again, with the WooCommerce site, some of these crawlers like SEMrush and Ahrefs can be extremely abusive to the website and they do things like add and remove to cart multiple times per second, um, hitting the wish list multiple times per second, and again, they choose a lot of server resources. So if you're getting like flat spots where the site runs fast and then all of a sudden it's slow for an hour, that may be the issue there where you're getting kind of SEO bots and SEO crawlers coming to the site, hammering it, and then they go away or they time out or, or whatever. So... Those two are probably the important rules. Don't use this one for, you'll see the first rule. This one, you shouldn't use this one for WooCommerce because it may break things. So those two rules. So that's Cloudflare rules. Um, okay, next one. Again, about eliminating or reducing workflow workload. Um, we use the free version of WordFence, the WordFence plugin. That's just autocorrect there, but you want to use WordFence on your WooCommerce site. That'll filter again threats and things like brute force attacks that get through cloudflare it just provides another layer of security there to filter that garbage and anything anybody that's trying to do malicious things on the website it'll help filter that as well so install wordfence it's pretty straightforward use the free version and it'll help a lot there is a bit of a performance hit to using wordfence but the performance hit for the 
you know, the performance hit that WordFence has is a lot less than the performance hit that security and other, you know, crawlers and scrapers and things probing the site are going to have on the site. So there, there is a net gain effectively there and it's a free, you can use the free plugin. That's fine. Okay, last one here. We want to block the WooCommerce search, the add to cart and add to wishlist in our robots.txt file. So this will stop crawlers trying to load those pages or load those query strings effectively. So I kind of touch on this with the SEO crawlers and scrapers. Even Google, Google Scrawler can be malicious and other genuine search engine crawlers can be malicious as well. Often they will try and crawl search pages. They will try and crawl add to cart links, add to wishlist links. And again, they'll do the same thing as a search crawler and they will hammer the website or with a, an SEO crawler and hammer the website with uh, traffic that just adds a lot of load and slows things down. So these are the things that, these are the, the rows here. We'll put this in the video description. If you add these to your robots.txt file, this will block Google from crawling these URLs or these query strings. They're not actually URLs, they're query strings. There is a second layer here you can do as well. If you check in Google Search Console, and I'll just load up a client here. If you're in Google Search Con Console, go to Pages, and go to Alternate Page with proper canonical tag, <clears throat> you'll see anything else that is loading with a query string. And anything that has a query string in, in WooCommerce adds load to the website. So these are often search filters or categories that have not been set up properly. They've been set up with searches instead of full categories. Anything like this is a candidate for this attribute underscore PA jet size or attribute PA quantity. We don't want Google crawling those typically. So you probably, now use some care here. Don't go blocking Google randomly because that might break your SEO. But anytime you see query strings like this, it may be a problem um, and it may be chewing a bunch of loads. So you see here, in this case, there's an add to cart URL. So Google is crawling the add to cart URLs. So what's happening, Google is coming along and adding and removing things to the cart, just like other crawlers. So by adding those, there's the lines there you can add. So by adding those into the robots.txt file, we block Google and we block all the other crawlers that honor that file. Now, not all crawlers honor it. so. That's why we need those Cloudflare rules as, uh, as well to block crawlers that just ignore the robots file. But adding those four lines in will reduce the load significantly in many cases. Um, it also protects you against, there is a negative of a type of negative SEO attack we've been seeing where spammers and scrapers will load up a bunch of searches or hit the search URL with porn and spam and gambling links and get Google to index those. So by using these disallows as well, we kind of, kind of provide a little bit of a protection from that as well. So there is kind of a security boost to doing that too. So that's it for this video. That's kind of the high level overview of, you know, what, you know, those are kind of the big 80% of the time. It's one of those issues that we find with a site and that's why it's slow in the back end. So just to recap, so use good hosting, look at the format of the database store, uh, database tables. So the storage engine they're using, you want to use InnoDB. Get high performance auto storage working that regardless of what else you do, even if your database, even if the back end is not too slow, that will make a significant improvement all around, even on the front end of the site. So particularly for users, check for PHP errors using query monitor, use the highest version of PHP the site supports, use a content delivery network and add those rules, use WordFence plugin and then block these guys in your robots.txt file. So that's it for this video. If you want more help, Go to our website. Um, there's a few ways we can help you here. If you want site speed optimization help, fill out a free audit there on our homepage and tell us what you need help with or what the problem is you're struggling with and we can have a look at your site and come back to you, tell you how we can help. Uh, what else do we have? We have a free Core Web Vitals report. Um, so if you fill this out, no opt-in required, it will give you a report on your website speed. This pulls the data from Google. So this is the real speed of the website. Um, it's a high level overview of the average of the site, but it'll give you an idea of how the site is performing. There's no opt-in required for that. It takes about 60 seconds to generate the report and it will update on the second Tuesday of each month with last month's data. And there's a video there to talk it through and explain how to read that report. And then also our free WordPress site speed test. So if you're on that, it takes, again, no opt-in required. It takes about 90 seconds and it will give you detailed uh, recommendations on how to speed up whatever page you've tested or your homepage and it will check for simple errors like 404s and things like that. So I'll leave that with you. That's all, all over at our website, wpspeedfix.com. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments and uh, happy to come back to you. Cheers.